Sometimes text, textual studies can be, uh, uh, can be very profitable, and uh, you'll find them to be some of your more favorite studies to do. Now, topical ones, we have mentioned before, sometimes topical ones, it's what we're more accustomed to doing, maybe, and uh, sometimes they're, they can be a little easier to do than a textual study. Uh, usually, when you are doing a textual study, you have to, uh, you've really got to dig in to the text. Uh, because the idea is you're, you're, not, you're not trying to run all over the Bible and just choose a verse from here and a verse from here and a verse from here. You're trying to say, here's what this text says. And, uh, and so it, it, sometimes it's going to take a little bit longer to, uh, to dig in and, and understand exactly uh, what it's saying. But here's a topical study. And what, what is a topical study doing? You're trying to uncover what does the Bible say about a particular Bible topic. And uh, how, how, do you, how do you go about teaching Something like that. What's the first thing we always do? Pray. All right, that's number one. It's been number one on every, well, almost every class we've had, I think. Maybe all of them, I don't know. Uh, and it'll be on, it, you can count on it being number one the next class we have, unless we just totally fail in remembering uh, to put it on there. But why is this the first thing? This is the most important. What? Why is this the first thing you do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do without God's help? Who, whose word are you teaching? You're teaching His word. Wouldn't it be good to talk to Him about it, uh, and and ask Him for some help and ask Him for guidance? And uh, you know, it, shame on us if if we think we don't need to do that, or shame on us if we get so busy. I'm just I just got to throw something together. I don't have time to pray about it. Well, you're gonna huh, we'll see see how that lesson turns out. Uh, you know, at the end of it, it, it may sound good and feel good, but the reality is this isn't about us. We're, we are trying to change people's lives with the Word of God. And uh, uh, if, if we think we can do that without God, then, then we're, not, uh, we're not understanding what our purpose is. So, first thing we do is pray. Now, second thing we do, again, might be kind of obvious, but it is, what am I, what's my subject? What is it that I'm going to teach? Um... Now, sometimes, well, if you're asked to teach here, um, well, let's, st let's state it this way. If you are asked to teach a, a series of classes, if you're asked to teach for a whole session or something like that here, usually you are given the materials. You know what you're being asked to teach. Uh, usually you're not going to be asked, hey, will you teach a junior high class? Great. Teach them whatever you want to teach them. Um, that's not our general operation here. Um, uh, usually, hopefully, and always, when you're asked to teach here, you're going to, you are going to be supplied with the, the topic, the text, and the materials by which to teach it. Uh, the, the, the exceptions that I can think to that are if you are asked to fill in for a class. Uh, if the teacher's going to be gone and you're asked to fill in for a class, sometimes the teacher will ask you to teach a specific thing, like Paul taught last week, and uh, I asked them to teach a specific thing about prayer in the class. But a lot of times, if you're asked to fill in to teach, you're, it's just going to be, look, you're willing to teach? Wonderful. Teach whatever you want. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's up to you. And uh, the idea there is you take something, you take something you've already taught, uh, something that you've been working on on your own, something you're already familiar with, and, uh, and, and prepare it for that class. So then that's when you've got to figure out, okay, what am I going to teach? Uh, what Bible subject uh, am I trying to look at? And remembering that, as we've said before, you want to teach something that fits you, uh, and you want to teach something that fits whoever you're talking to, uh, whoever you're teaching. Uh, you, you can't teach something that you don't know or isn't really comfortable for you, and you know you, you can't, uh, you, you don't need to teach something that's that's not relevant or. Uh, uh, or something that's really going to have an impact on those that you're teaching. Sometimes that's determined by what age group you're teaching. Now, when you choose your subject, even more important, once you've chosen the subject uh, that you're going to teach, just as important as the subject itself is fine-tuning that subject and narrowing it down to something that's manageable. Um, let, let's, let's suppose you were going to teach on grace. You were going to teach on the subject of grace. That's a huge topic. What, what, are you, what are you going to do in 40 minutes on grace? I mean, grace is, grace is, a, is, is a series of classes itself. You've got, you've got to narrow that down. 
Uh, if, if you were asked to teach a class and, and the subject was even baptism, okay, that's a little more narrow, but okay, I'm going to teach on baptism. What about baptism? There's a hundred verses in the New Testament about baptism. You're going to cover every single one of them uh, in 40 minutes. Uh, so you, you've got to take whatever the subject is, narrow it down to something that, that you can manage. Um, and and that, sometimes that's a hard thing to do, but it, it's critical to do in your preparation. Otherwise, your study is all over the place. Uh, you know, if, if you're going to study, what does the Bible say about grace? Wow. Um, you're going to be looking at every story in the Bible. You know, you're going to be looking at every occasion in the Bible. There's the Bible, the whole Bible is about the grace of God. So you, you've got you've got to fine tune, narrow that down to to a subject that that you can handle and is uh, something that can be covered uh, in a short amount of time. Fourth thing is uh, determine before you set out in your study. Determine that you are going to let the Bible draw its own conclusions. Um, that, that may seem obvious, but too often we already know what we want to teach. We're just going to go to the Bible to find the verses to prove what we're going to teach. I already know what I'm going to say. Now I just need to go find some verses so it sounds like, you know, the Bible's kind of going along with what, with what I've got to say. That is so backwards. Uh, I mean, that, that's just, that is coming in the wrong door and going in the wrong direction. Uh, it, it is not, well, I, I, I've got to go find those, those verses that, that fit what I'm saying and then, the, and then the lesson will be done. Go into the study, even a topical study, and let the Bible draw its own conclusions. Let the Bible do the teaching. Um, it, isn't this what we tell people when we're, you know, isn't, that, isn't this what we tell unbelievers when we're talking to them? You know, don't believe what I say. Don't believe what the preacher says. Don't believe what, you know, some book, something you've read online says. Let the Bible speak for itself, right? Let the Bible draw its own conclusions. Well, if that's what we encourage others to do, um, then, uh, then, then we need to do that uh, instead of, uh, you know, getting the Bible to fit what we want. And, and really, it will enrich your study if you let the Bible do the teaching. Um, you know, if, if we already know what we're going to say, uh, then, then we're not allowing the Bible to come out and, and really impact our study. Any, any comment? Th those first four are kind of general and, and maybe, maybe obvious to you, but any comments on any of those? And there was silence for half an hour. Nothing at all. Okay. Perfect. Okay, number five. Now you're going to do your study. You've narrowed your topic. You've, you, have, you have a mindset. I'm going to let the Bible do the teaching. Now you start your study. What do you do? It's, it's a topical study. So you're not just digging into a, a paragraph or a chapter. You are, you are surveying the entire Bible. So you've got to gather all of the relevant Bible passages on a Bible subject. Now, if, you, if your subject is grace, how many Bible verses are you going to have on grace? Too many. Absolutely. Too many. You, you've got to narrow that down. Now, I know that you all know about concordances. I didn't bring any concordances in here. Um, you, you, you know what a concordance does. Uh, let, let's say that we, let's say we were going to, we were going to teach on, on the need for humility among God's people. Now, you could go to a concordance. What sort of words would you look up in a concordance to teach on humility? Humility. Humble. Do we run out? Meek. Kind. Say it. Lowliness. Submission. Say it. Servant. Tenderhearted. Okay. So... You, you, you've taken your word humble, your humility, you've expanded it to some synonyms. Uh, now, if you look up, uh, how many did we say? Seven or eight words there? If you look up in a concordance, all seven or eight words there, how much are you going to have? Tons, which is great. The, 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 what you want in, in, in preparing a lesson is you want more material uh, than, than, what you, than, what you can, uh, than what you have an opportunity to teach. You, you don't want to walk in with not enough. You don't want to be done in seven minutes. Say, well, that's all I got. 
uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a little embarrassing. And uh, you're, you're wasting uh, a collective amount of time. So you want a lot, but okay, so now I've looked up in a concordance. Now, there's, there's two books, and I didn't, I didn't bring in enough for everybody to see, but maybe if you're nice enough, you can share. Um, the, uh, the Thompson chain reference that, uh, who, who in here owns a Thompson, anybody own a Thompson chain reference? Those, those babies are, th those are awesome, okay? Those are like the, the Bible, the Bible to have if you're going to do, if you're going to be a teacher. Um, look, look up, look up, um, get, get, get where you can see a Thompson and, uh, let, let me let me see if I can let me see if I can find something real quick. Turn to turn in Thompson. The page number is going to be 1807, if I looked at it right. So down in, bottom, down on the bottom of the Thompson chain reference are the page numbers. Look at page 180. Nope. 1809. Look at page 1809. And the page numbers are at the bottom of the page. Here's, here's our topic. Here's our topic of humility. Now, what we want to do is we want to do a topical study. We're, we're trying to do a topical study of what the Bible says about humility. Now, here's what, uh, here's what Thompson does. If you're on page 1809, look back at page 1808. And these are Thompson's numbers. His, you see number 1714, his number, 1714 on page 1808. Hopefully everybody were together uh, on this. Tim, I mean, if you all want to scoot up and look at these so that you're, you're together. Here, here's, what, here's Thompson taking a Bible subject. You can go to a concordance and you can find all of these verses. What Thompson does is he takes some of the Bible verses and he groups them together into topics taking a topic and even dividing that topic out for you. And so look at 1714 where he's, he divides, he gives you verses about the promises to those who are humble. Then in 1715, he gives verses where humility is prescribed, where God commands us to be humble. Then in 1716, he gives us Bible examples uh, of those who demonstrated humility. In uh, 1718, he gives the ultimate example of Jesus being humble. Uh, he gives other, in uh, 1721, he gives other examples of people uh, who were humble at the feet of Christ. And then you go into the next page and he gives the, the, uh, the opposite of humility and he talks about pride. So let's suppose you're going to teach a class. Um, you're going to do a devotional. You're going to do, do speak on the topic of humility. You can grab a concordance and you can look up humility, a humble, and, and as many synonyms as you can come up with, remembering that depending on what concordance you're looking at. Now, if you use an online concordance, you can look up whatever translation you want. But uh, remembering that different translations will have a different word. You know? And so uh, you, you, you use an online translation and, and you find all of those. But there are some topical reference books, like the Thompson Chain Reference, that can really give you a shortcut in your preparation time. Um, I, I love Thompson Chain and what he does in that because, now, that doesn't mean you, you don't use your concordance. That doesn't mean you don't look stuff up uh, on your own and, and you know, just, uh oh, Thompson did this, so I don't need to, I don't need to do anything else on it. Uh, remember that even when you come to Thompson, this is a man who decided how to take a topic and divide it up in what verses he thought would fit with that topic. Could there be some problems with it? Could there be some inconsistencies? Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's not going to mess up too much on the topic of humility. You know, it's, it's, it's hard for a, a, somebody, you know, a Bible reader to mess that up. Um, but when you get into some of the other topics, you, you know, you, you're going to find even some errors in the way that he would group things together. Um, but he, here's a great way... Now, if you'll notice, well, I don't, I don't know that I want to teach how to use a Thompson chain, but if, if you will notice 1714, 1715, 1716, those numbers, there are verses there that are in bold. Those bold verses are the ones that are printed out in, in their entirety below. 
But the ones that are not bold are other verses that he thinks fit in this topic that you would need to go and look up because he doesn't have them printed out below. So you're, that's going to require some effort on your part. But if you were to actually go, and we won't look at how to use a Thompson chain reference, but it's a great, it, it, he obviously starts with the first verse in a particular chain, and then in the margin next to each one of those verses, he's going to say, okay, look here next, look here next, look here next, look here next, and just create a chain for you to follow. Uh, a great Bible study tool. Uh, now, yeah. Go ahead. Before number one, in Thompson's listing here, there's a list of every topic that he's discussed. So, you know, you, you just go at, at the start of it, at the preamble to this section of the book, there's a topic, and there's over 4,000 topics he discusses. It's a fabulous thing. Yeah. You just turn to the book of Revelation, and then you turn a couple pages after the book of Revelation, you find the alphabetical index. And you just, you, 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 you scour the index to, to find whatever topic you're looking for. And uh, if, if you don't own one, they, they will, uh, they're, they're not cheap. Uh, they, you know, it, it depends on what you want. You, you all, there's uh, hard, uh, hardbacks that are there. Obviously, those are the cheapest that you could buy in a hardback, maybe all that you need. Um, there are also, in, in, some, uh, in some Bible software, some of the Bible software that you can buy for your computer will have Thompson chain reference numbers in it. Uh, so you could also use it there. I don't find those to be nearly as helpful uh, as just using this uh, right, right directly to it. But this is a great study tool. Uh, the other one that's on the table is called Knave's Topical Bible. Um, I personally don't find that to be as useful. Uh, it can be. If, if, you, if you get the right topic, it can be helpful. Um, problem is sometimes the topic I'm looking for, he doesn't, you know, he, he, he doesn't touch. Um, but uh, that's another one that, that groups topics together, pulls verses together on various topics. Because when you're looking at concordance, you're not looking up a topic, you're looking up specific words. And so if you don't, if you don't happen to think of the right word, you won't find the right verse. Uh, that's why these topical books are, uh, are very helpful. Uh, how many of you have ready reference for growing Christians? Not very many. Good. Everybody can have, well, not, maybe I don't know if everybody. Whatever is here is, uh, is all that I have, so this is what you all get. Um, if, if there's not enough here, then you're out of luck. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to order some more, uh, but that's all, I had, that's all I had on hand. Those are great books. Um, Paul, Paul Sane, who has been on our lectureship, um, uh, who, uh, who's in Tennessee, he worked with the uh, East Hill congregation up there for over 30 years. This is a great little book that in this particular edition, uh, there are 100 Bible subjects. He has a hardback version of this that has 120 in it. Uh, but there's 100 Bible subjects in here. He takes the subject, he divides the subject out into its major points, and then he gives the, the verses that would go along with that, along with kind of a, a five or six word summary uh, of that verse. But uh, if you're not familiar with this book, it will become one of your favorites uh, in your Bible study. Because again, he's taking a Bible subject. You know, you look at heaven, you look at hell. I don't know if he's got humility in there. I didn't look it up. Um, but, but you find the Bible subject and it's, it's helpful for, for preparing Bible classes. Uh, it's helpful for when you're in, a Bible, and you're in a Bible discussion with somebody. And you can't remember, where is, where is that verse that says that all liars will go to hell? Uh, you know, or where is the verse, you know, or where, how, do, how do I help somebody to, to understand that, uh, that baptism is essential? Or whatever it is. There, there's, there's all of the subjects in there. He's got some stuff at the back. I can't remember what all he's got at the back. Some neat charts, some questions you can ask various denominations and, uh, and different things. But I, that, that's a really cool uh, study tool that uh, is great. We try to give it, uh, we try to make sure that our, that our students have it. Uh, at some point, they, it's given to them. At least they have the opportunity to get it multiple times uh, while they are uh, students here. But uh, if you know of people that uh, this should have one of those. You, you can order it. 
You can order it directly from same publications. You can order it from Gospel Advocate. You can order it from any Christian uh, Church of Christ bookstore, not, uh, not Barnes & Noble or, uh, or Inspiration House, but uh, uh, Fried Hardman Bookstore, or uh, just go online and you can find it. Um, but uh, they, they, are, they are a great study tool, and those are, those are for you to have. And uh, order some and give them to your kids and other people. You'll find those to be very helpful. Oh, man, we're out of time. Um, so some, other, some other helpfuls. I don't know if, and I, I don't have, I have one of these, so here it is. Um, uh, Nichols Pocket Bible Encyclopedia is before Paul Sane came out with his, this was like the only thing uh, of its class. And uh, this is, uh, uh, this, this is uh, a little bit older. This is probably, uh, uh, probably from the 40s or 50s. And, uh, but he takes, he takes, again, Bible subjects. That he treats them a little bit differently than the ones that we've looked at here. Uh, these are still in print. They're charging an arm and a leg for this little book. I think they're charging like four bucks now, which I think is ridiculous. But uh, um, it may even be five bucks. I don't know. But this, this is a very helpful little tool. I think, is it on your, did I print, give this on your list? Nichols, is that on your list? Do I, I, I can't remember if those are listed there. Another good source for you are just Bible tracts. Um, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's two pages of great material usually that really can, can uh, take a topic and divide it out for you. We have, um, I don't know, we've probably got 300 tracts uh, back in the track room. Now, there's, there's 20 of them that you know, will be on display out in the lobby, but it, it, if, you, if you know where our track room is, um, it's, on the, it's on the opposite of the baptism side of the, uh, of the auditorium. So we send people to the right to be baptized and send people to the left to not be baptized. Um, but uh, in there are 300 something track. There's little yellow binders in there that have, uh, that have all of the tracks listed and they're in there uh, by alphabetical, by author and by topic. So if you're looking for a specific topic, the tracks have been categorized by topic. You can look up that topic, and the tracks are in there by number. Very easy to find tracks. But a great way to get a real easy snapshot uh, on a particular uh, Bible topic. So when you're asked to teach, most of the time you're going to be given material to do it. Uh, but even if you are not, there are multiple sources that you can use right here um, that you've got an opportunity to use and, and take and uh, develop your lessons, and that's in addition to, to some of the other online sources that we have listed uh, on other handouts. Other points on this is to make sure that you look up uh, all the, I guess these weren't up here, but these are on your sheet. Look up all the relevant words and synonyms. Uh, look up every possible verse that, you, you, you know, try not to leave out a key passage on something. Make sure you keep every verse in its context. Sometimes you'll find a verse that the wording is great, Except that's not what 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 you may want it to teach is not is not what it's teaching, you know. You, you, you may you may be teaching a class on uh, on the the uh, the difficulties of uh, of being a Christian or the trials that come upon being a Christian, and you may run to Matthew 24 and, and talk about you know we're 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 living in a day and age where where there where there's greatest tribulation ever and there won't be anything else like it again and well no that that wrong. I mean, out of context. Yeah, that's what Matthew 24 is saying, but that's, that's, not, that's not talking about what we're going through. But it's, it's a great chapter that talks about tribulation, except the immediate application is not for us. Uh, so try, try to make sure you keep things in their context. And uh, remember, or not Isaiah, Psalm 119, verse 160. Uh, the old ASV, and, and maybe one of the other translations too, maybe, I don't think ESV, but the old ASV said, the sum, S-U-M, the sum of thy word is truth. Uh, meaning, when you gather all that the Bible says on a subject, you've got all the truth that there is. Um, now, is, is faith essential for salvation? Yeah, it's essential for salvation. If I, if I teach that faith is essential for salvation... And that's all that we need to know. It's truth that faith is essential for salvation. 
But have I gathered all that the Bible says about salvation if all I'm doing about salvation is teaching that you've got to have faith? I'm teaching a truth that salvation requires faith, but I've got to gather the sum, S-U-M. The problem is that some people are more inclined to teach the S-O-M-E of truth and say that's the conclusion that we draw, but we've got to teach the S-U-M. Let's draw it all together. And uh, obviously that's going to take a little bit of time uh, and effort on your part. Any, any comments Any comments on this point? This is, this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time uh, in, in, in this particular part of the study. Number six, and we're, we're going we're gonna to speed through some of this. I've got seven minutes and we don't have time to come back to this later. Uh, number six, define key terms. That's for you and for your class. Uh, if you're going to teach sanctification, you're going to teach justification, you're going to teach grace, you're going to teach uh, wh whatever Bible words, define what those words mean. Don't, don't assume that you know what they mean. Don't assume that people in the class uh, know what they mean. Number seven, look for biblical examples that relate to the subject. This is a great way to make your class, the lesson come alive. If you're going to teach humility, what about giving some Bible examples of humility? You, know, you teach the principles, you teach the instructions of humility, and then you say, now here's a picture. You know, why, why was show and tell so great in kindergarten? Because you could tell and you could show. And when you could show it, ah, oh, now I know what you're saying. When, when you teach about humility and then you show it, oh yeah, now I get it. Uh, so, so look for those Bible examples. Number seven, after you've done all of your study, after you've done your homework, you gathered all of your relevant Bible material, look over it, examine it, organize it, and then, as 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 would say, handle it aright, uh, which simply means don't draw conclusions. Don't draw conclusions that the texts and the verses don't warrant. Don't, don't try to make them, like using Matthew 24, don't try to make them say something they don't say. Um, you know, we want to do that sometimes because we want to make our point. But don't don't force the Bible to make some point that the Bible doesn't make, particularly in a, in a given passage. But what are the logical, I think A, B, and C are under your, are they, are they on your sheet on letter A? What are the log or A and B maybe on your sheet? What are the logical main points? What are the conclusions that are demanded by the passages? Number nine, group your findings into, into your major points. Now this is what you did on your textual studies, now you're doing it on your topical study. What are the main points that are going to be drawn out about humility? God demands it, God rewards it, God gives examples of it. There's major points about humility, and then everything can fit in underneath that. Number 10, and so, number 10 could come before number 9, depending on where you are in your preparation. As much as we're going to tell you to pray before every lesson, we're going to tell you, write a thesis statement. The thesis statement says, what are you trying to accomplish with this class? You've got to have it. Otherwise, you're going to be all over the place uh, in your preparation. Your thesis statement helps you to stay focused so that when you find a verse that's a really neat verse and you've never seen that verse before and it says something that's really cool, but it doesn't fit your thesis, have to use that one later. But what we do sometimes, we find something and we just, we want to cram it in. All right, I'm going to make this fit in this class somewhere, somehow, and it doesn't fit and you, you get off course. Uh, you know, you start chasing down a road that's, that's, not, that's not on your humility topic. It's about something completely different, but it's really cool. Um, either rewrite your thesis and redo your entire lesson to fit what you found that's really cool, or take the really cool thing, put it aside and say, I'll do that later, and stick with your thesis. That, that thesis, that, that's your, that is your mothership in this whole thing. It, it is keeping you uh, focused and on target uh, number, uh, whatever we are on, what are we, 11? Saturate your lesson with Bible verses. This is not your lesson, this is God's lesson. Let, him, let His Word do the teaching, and this is where you will allow those verses to create your sub-points underneath your main points. Uh, and then uh, number 12, make applications. Let people walk out of there with relevant, everyday to life, material that they can put into practice right then. Uh, you know, when you teach on something like humility, you might think, well, the application is obvious. Well, it is. 
but help it to be even more obvious. Give them practical ways to put that, uh, to put that into, uh, into their lives right then. How, how can I take humility and, and be more humble right here and right now? In, any, I, I've sped through this, and number 13, we, we've mentioned this every, almost every week, and we hardly ever take time to develop it, but that, that's critically important. You need to have an introduction and conclusion. You need to make sure you have a period of application in the lesson, and then obviously your major points. Any comments or questions on any of that? Mike? Right, right. Oh, no, absolutely. Well, you, you can, absolutely. Uh, but, and and, and the, idea, the idea here is um, that th this lesson needs to be, here's what the Bible says about this. And, and you need to make sure that it, it does not come across as this is, what, this is what I have to say about it. Here's what brother so-and-so says about it because he said it in his book and so it must be right. Um, but... Here, here's, here's what the Bible says about humility and draw those things out. Uh, and, and, and yes, you're right. There, there has to be balance you, in, uh, uh, you, you cannot. And, and the idea of saturation is that uh, you, you'll know it when you see it. You'll, you'll know if your lesson is saturated with the Bible or not. Uh, you know, if, if, if you only have a couple verses in there, uh, then, then you're, you're, not, you're not covering it. All right, let me, let me quickly give you your... Uh, your assignment for tonight, for this week, is, uh, is to develop a topical lesson. Now we've given, you, we've given you a selection of topics on here. Um, if you have a different topic that you would really like to cover, go for it. Um, you know, as long as it's within the realm of reasonableness, uh, you can go for that. But here's what we would like to do is for you to, to take a Bible topic to do what we've done tonight, try to narrow that down into something that's manageable, gather what the Bible says about it, organize the thoughts, and, uh, and then write, uh, write your thesis statement and your major points. And uh, next week, what we would like to do is what we did last week and what we finished with tonight is to give you an opportunity in a, in a brief way. You won't, you, won't be able to, you won't be able to share everything about what you have found, but be able to share in a brief way. Here's, here's the topic I chose. Here's the thesis statement uh, that I determined to, to keep my lesson focused. And here are the major points uh, that I found uh, for that particular topic. And so I know all of this is very fast. We're trying to cover a lot of material in this, but uh, you want to wrap it up?